Hi, welcome to the noise path. In this episode, we're going to take a look at another instrument. This is actually a dumpster find, and this is a Melis Grio piezoelectric controller. Now, if you've never heard of this brand, I think Melis Grio is actually the name of two people. It's because they make really specialized instruments for optics and physics and so on. Now, a piezoelectric controller, as the name suggests, is something that can be used to control some kind of piezoelectric crystal. Now, normally these are in actuators, and that's kind of obvious because this thing has three channels. So if you have three channels, you can control three crystals, you can move something in three dimensions in X, Y, and Z, and that's exactly what something like this is used for. Now, at the same time, this is really nothing more than a three-channel power supply that goes up to about 100 volts. Now, because these are piezoelectric controllers, they don't need to have a lot of driving capability into the crystal itself, but they still need to be able to provide a very high voltage and you need to react very quickly. Now, this has another option, which you can put a sum or a difference signal into the each channel and it will add or subtract from the voltage that you set. So you can adjust this voltage over here and then you can just simply apply to analog voltages. Now why would you ever want to do that? Well that's because you can put these piezoelectric controllers in some kind of a negative feedback to automatically align things, for example for optical alignment and so on. The movement here is very small as we were going to try and see if we can do some experiment with it. Now I haven't really really tried this but I know that I can turn it on, it doesn't explode. So there we go, when you turn it on, you just get a whole bunch of zeros, and it happens that if I turn these, I can actually change its voltages. So I think it's working because these are just simply measuring actually the voltage of the output. If I turn all three of them to their maximum, you can see that we are supposed to be getting pretty close to 75 volts on all the channels. They're a little bit different, that probably needs a bit of calibration, which we will take a look at. So I also want to see what's in the inside and see how they're putting it together. So we have three outputs over here, and they're color-coded by the individual ones. And on their own, it's not super exciting. We're going to need to have some kind of a piezoelectric actuator to make this really do something cool. But first, let's measure the output and make sure they're producing the correct voltages and take a look inside. So, Pooch, what is your opinion on piezoelectric controllers? You think we're going to be able to make one of them work? I'm not sure if the owners of the picoscope appreciate you sitting under scope. And here's what's inside of the instrument. It looks really nice, and the principal operation is pretty straightforward. We have the AC line coming in into a transformer, for which then we go onto the board and we rectify that into a DC voltage. So far, it's the same as every other power supply. Now, you have a very large DC voltage after rectifying, and that's sitting somewhere on the board over here. Now, you want to convert that into an adjustable output from DC all the way to, let's say, about 100 volts or 75 volts in this case. Now, in a regular power supply, where you want to dissipate a lot of power into a load, that's difficult because the, the diff bigger the difference between the rectified voltage and the output voltage, more power needs to be dissipated in a heatsink. But here, our heatsinks are quite small. That's because the output current of this is quite small, so there's not a lot of power dissipation. We're just mostly interested in creating an adjustable power supply. So there are three channels, and they're exactly the same. There's even some thermal protection and everything built into these primary transistors. And there's some additional circuitry over here, which are controlled because of the op-amps, where you need to add and subtract voltages. That's really all it is. You have a negative feedback with some additional voltages to control the value that you're interested in, and then you get the output of the power supply. So fundamentally, not much going on here. And there's a couple of potentiometers to adjust probably limits and some calibrations of the value that is read by the front LCD screens. So I think it looks good. Otherwise, these are the potentiometers over there. So I'm going to hook it up to a multimeter so we can make sure those voltages are actually correct before we connect it to anything and then let's see if we can get a piezoelectric crystal to do something all right let's see if this readout is actually accurate or if we need to do some calibration so zero does read zero so let's go here to let's say 10 volts or so yeah it reads a little high but that's fine let's go all the way to the end and what do we have okay so that's reading 73 that's reading 75 so there's a small difference in the slope here and that's that accounts for it so i think these are actually 75 volt channels and 73 doesn't really make any sense because 75 is a standard for piezoelectric actuators so i think i'm going to have to find out which of these potentiometers uh, controls the readout here so we can match it to what this multimeter is saying okay i think i may have found which one i need to adjust let's see there we go you can see that the readout on the screen of the instrument is getting higher so we're just going to match these two together. There we go. That's pretty good. They're now reading exactly the same value. I'm happy with that. I'm going to do the same thing on all the channels. 
So let's see if we can make this X, Y, Z stage actually work. So this is a 3D hybrid manipulator, and these are really fragile, and you have to buy a whole bunch of them from eBay just to make one working one, because they get damaged pretty easily, especially if somebody drops them or something goes wrong with a piece of crystals inside. So I think I have repaired this one from a different video that I can see if I can post that later on. So this plate that you see at the top is connected to an internal structure of this, and it's can see that it is not fully connected to the unit itself and it can move up and down forward and back and left and right that's really the x y and z that you see over here now if you want to move this plate in a relatively coarse way you turn this screw if you want to move it even more fine you turn this screw and if you want to move it really really fine then you're going to use the piezoelectric crystals which are inside and they're controlled with the x y z voltages here up to a maximum of 75 volts so really all this is is a crystal that is sitting on top of some mechanical gears and together they sum up all the movements between all of those in order to move this plate at the very top now piezoelectric crystals themselves are a subject of a whole video i could make on them and talk about them and there are these crystals that by applying charge to them you can change their dimensions you can warp them you can change their length or if you apply mechanical pressure on them and you change their shape by force they generate charge or electricity it has to do with the interactions of the electric charge and the crystalline structure of the piezoelectric material itself and because of this phenomenon there's a lot of things you can do with it you can make speakers you can make spark generators you can make these kind of actuators and motors it's really quite amazing maybe we'll talk about it in a different video but really here i want to measure to see if applying the voltage to this does cause some displacement now the movement is really really small so we need some very sensitive measurement just to be able to tell if this thing moves at all because of the voltage we're applying and see if it has the correct correlation so i'm going to set that up and show you how that is done we can only really measure the vertical one in this case because the other two are a little bit more difficult to attach any measurement device to but let me set that up and show you how it works so let's see if we can measure this displacement so what i have over here is a measurement device that measures very precisely the displacement of this piston and that's sitting at the top of this plate now this plate is going to move up and down in almost an imperceptible amount by either these micrometers or by of course the piezoelectric voltage going in and here we're measuring the exact displacement so i'm going to reset this so without applying any piezoelectric voltage i can just turn one of these and you can see that that number is changing now this is a very very small amount this number is in millimeters which means this this digit over here is in micrometer and the digit after that is in 0.1 micrometer so extremely small and by turning this you can see that i can move this by a very very small amount these are just micrometers of displacement here that i can do so let's preset that again now instead of using the micrometer i'm going to apply the piezoelectric voltage now, let's see how much displacement we can get from that uh, it's very hard to keep this number steady because this setup is not that stable for such a precise measurement sitting on you know a wooden table normally you'll have to be on an optical table so let's go ahead and apply this so here is 10 volts how do we how much do we get we get two micrometers by applying 10 volts amazing so let's go all the way to 75 let's see what the maximum displacement is here's 75 21 and a half micron that's how much movement we get purely in solid state using the the actual crystals themselves we go all the way back we should be able to hit almost zero again back to where we were because it's reversible you can see we're almost at zero let me reset this again again pooch is on the table so of course he's moving around and that's causing a whole bunch of movement too let's go back all the way to 75 there you go 21 micron all the way back should be um, back to zero again yeah it's incredible this is purely in solid state now that movement may not seem like a lot but if you're aligning a fiber and you're looking at micron of accuracy already and in a displacement of a micron is important to you you can absolutely do it with this so if i go just to a few volts if i go slowly you can see how nicely i can control this movement that's amazing and of course this is completely invisible to the eye and even if i put my finger on it and trying to sense the movement i still can't it's really really fine pretty amazing well of course we said that the piezoelectric should also work in reverse so if i just gently tap the top surface of this i should be able to capture a wave from coming out of the piezoelectric crystal on the oscilloscope here we go there it is you can clearly do this over and over again i'm, I'm, I'm hitting it very very gently of course because i don't want to damage it but you can clearly see that this process in fact does work in reverse as well 
And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this quick video of this piezoelectric controller. If you want to learn more about piezoelectrics or if you want me to make a dedicated video about that, just let me know in the comment section and we can think about doing some more experiment using this instrument. As always, I'll talk to you there.